It's NJ here and today we're having a look at a new set of gimbals. Now if you remember a while back I did a video of these M9 Hall Sensor gimbals uh, as soon as they released I was really excited to get these into my Tyrannus uh, X9D Plus uh, basically because I, that was kind of the only real weak spot of the Tyrannus for me. Uh, coming as, a, as someone who flew uh, Spectrum for the longest time, whatever you say about Spectrum, whether you like them or not, um, it's pretty unanimous that they have really fantastic quality gimbals in them and being a, an ex-RC helicopter pilot, that precision and feel of those, those great gimbals was, was something I really missed, even though I, I really do love the kind of superior functionality, for me anyway, um, of the uh, Tyrannus in terms of its programming and its logical switches, and it, it can do anything you want it to. So uh, being able to upgrade to these was, was a really nice thing. Obviously what makes the Hall Sensor gimbals great is the fact that because they're using Hall Sensors, um, they're not gonna wear out, they're gonna last a hell of a lot longer uh, than the standard gimbals. They're also made of a much nicer metal material um, across the actual base plate. Um, another thing that I really like, obviously you've got a much nicer, uh, larger resolution. And uh, the, the thing that I find favorite in my favorite thing in terms of the feel of them, um, as you can see, this is my custom painted uh, X9D. Again, there's a video on how I did this if you're interested. Again, I'll put a link up there. Um, but with these gimbals is how they bottom out when you actually take them to their extremes. Now, when I'm flying out, Acro freestyle. Uh, one of the things that I will do is um, I will always set my the uh, the rates right at the edge of the stick um, to be the speed that I want them to be so that I can use that as one variable if you like that I can minimize when I'm doing certain maneuvers so when I do a flip uh, and I want to do it at a certain speed that is determined by my rates and me going all the way to the extreme of the stick and if you look at any of my sticks videos you'll you'll notice that a lot when I'm going for those kind of maneuvers so I'm not going for a slow roll if ever I'm going for something fast I'm always going right the way over uh, and holding it for a set of time that I'm now used to and that keeps parts of my flying consistent. Now the way this actually bottoms out, this noise here, it's kind of got a really nice dampening to it when you hit the edge of the stick and that feels really pleasant as you as you bottom the stick out against the edge you know in all four corners it just feels it feels fantastic so I've, I've you know the actual feel of them is a real thing it might not be the case for everyone but for me I really noticed that and that's one big reason why I like one of the great reasons why I really like these uh, M9 gimbals however today we have now uh, got these to look at and um, these are the M7 gimbals and basically we're looking at exactly the same thing um, as the M9 gimbals but the difference being it is designed to go into this guy um, which is my uh, Tyrannus QX7. Now this uh, I've did again review videos on this there'll be some links so you can go and check that out if you don't know much about this radio or if you want to know more about it. As you know, I gave it a really good review, went really in depth with it, and I think it is a fantastic radio, but I don't know if you can see this or not. There is a fine layer of dust on my X7, um, and the real reason is just because I'm so used to those M9 gimbals that I've been using in my X9D, that I just, I find this kind of, it just doesn't feel as nice to fly. The radio itself is brilliant, it's a really nice unit, but for me, this was only gonna start getting used again as once those M7 gimbals were released and thankfully today we can do that we can install the m7s and have a closer look at them uh, i know some people did um, retrofit the m9s uh, into the QX7 but it was a real kind of you had to get the Dremel out you had to modify parts um, to uh, parts of the framework to actually get them to fit because some people simply couldn't wait or because this was their main transmitter in my case it's not my main transmitter um, and you know using my QXD was was sorry my um, X9D was probably uh, always going to be the winner once it had those uh, M9 gimbals in it um, but now this will definitely be getting some use um, now that I can put the uh, M7s in okay so in terms of what's in the box obviously you'll be requiring two of these um, we have a nicely packaged and well protected uh, Hall sensor gimbal it looks to me to be Pretty much exactly the same. What have we got here in the base as well? Is that it? Right, let's move that out of the way. Um, this looks to be exactly the same style and uh, manufacturing that's gone into this as the M9. Um, so the 7 doesn't make any reference to quality, it's just that the 7 is to go in the QX7 
and the 9 is to go in the X9D. Um, but as I said, there is a slightly uh, different mounting for this uh, in terms of how this is going to go in. In terms of the system to release the throttle stick, depending on whether you fly mode 1 or mode 2, it's going to use exactly the same system as the other one. Um, I don't know if you can see here, if we line this up, um, as I lower this throttle, you'll see this little retainer here and you'll see that screw hole become available. Now in the pack there's the four mounting screws and then if you can see just there there's this little thin screw here. So this guy, not the self tapping four but this little thin one here, um, that is going to go into that slot and basically hold this arm up and if I sort of simulate that and hold that arm up like this you'll see now that the the throttle stick is completely loose um, and you just do that on whichever side you prefer whether you're flying uh, mode 2 with the throttle stick on the left or mode 1 with the throttle stick on the right both gimbals are the same um, you just decide which of those you want to become your throttle stick and that's how you do it so we will get uh, get to do that to make mine mode 2 in just a second so you've got your four screw mounting holes, um, a much better more low profile tensioning system that was my biggest problem with the old gimbals on the uh, X9Ds, the, the kind of angle of everything it was you never really managed to get any good pressure down, never felt quite right this, this system's much nicer um, and as I said it's all nice and low profile uh, and then these single plugs to put in so you can't actually get this wrong it's very very hard to screw this up uh, the resistance you'll be adding here you have uh, either side uh, lowering this will give you that notched feel if you're a bit old school and you like that kind of notchy feel to the throttle or if you just want the throttle to have some kind of nice uh, smooth resistance you lower this side instead so you'd be screwing this side down uh, which as you can see there will lower and add tension to you can just see under here look um, that will add tension to the stick itself once it's released so you've either got that or you've got the notch and you can hear this actually and that will give you that notchiness um, or you can have both you, you might find a combination of the two is where you want it to be okay so with the QX7 on its back here the first thing we're going to want to do is to push in these tabs and remove the module bay door um, some people found as well that this does rat rattle around a little bit I just use a little bit of electrical tape uh, just literally one piece of electrical tape on here and so when that goes in that no longer rattles uh, if you're not running a module in the back and this does rattle around for you that's a quick and easy way to fix it um, we'll need to take off the battery door um, same thing here, I did this with the battery actually, was to uh, just add some, some foam pad because this battery that came with it is actually the official FR Sky 800mAh 7.2 nickel metal hydride battery so um, I did just add a little bit of padding again to stop that rattling around. Um, the next thing you want to do is to remove uh, this plug so that simply lifts and that's away, nice and easy there and now that reveals two of the screws that we need to undo so we need to remove this one, this one in the corner and then if we go up the top here you can see there's these two screws in the recesses so we're going to take those four screws out and then we should be able to just simply lift this away please be careful of these pins here you can see there's a very tiny slit there for these pins to come th uh, to, to poke through um, and when you pull this away it's not such an issue because you're just pulling uh, back and away but when you put it back on very easy to bend those so those are the first things you want to align uh, when you put this case back on don't just jam it back on and try and align the screws that first every time so we're just going to pull that back and away and we see the uh, beautiful innards of the QX7. Um, so in terms of what we have to do here there really isn't too much um, to worry about. You see we've got on this one these little cable retainers here so we're gonna uh, take this screw out so that we can get to these gimbal cables. Um, some of these cables here are actually for the switches at the top um, you can see here so obviously we don't want to be removing any of those and we've got four screws in each corner to actually get these gimbals out and they're all pretty easy to get to so four screws plus this one just take out the wires we need for the gimbal so there are the two gimbals side by side new one on the right old one on the left one thing you will notice when you remove this gimbal is that this ring here will probably come with it and um, this is certainly not something that I had to contend with on the X9D plus um, but it is uh, part of the design of the QX7 so that does quite simply slide off um, and what I would suggest you do is to place that back into its place like so inside of the um, QX7 
there doesn't appear to be any particular way for this to go. There's no kind of uh, notches or any particular ways around for that to sit. So it's literally just a circular press fit. And then we're going to take our gimbal. Um, I would suggest putting this top corner in first because that does actually have to seat underneath um, this uh, PCB here. So we'll go and tuck that under, we'll lay that flat and then we'll put these four screws in and then we'll have a look about reroute, have a look at rerouting the wiring and, uh, and plugging this all back up. Okay, something worth noting here. Now, this cable here, um, I found to be a little bit too short um, if it was routed through the retainer here. No matter what position I put this retainer, this cable retainer in, if I put it into roughly the right spot, you can see it would pop out here. Oh, it doesn't matter if it was here or a little bit lower, um, but I generally found that that was just making things too tight because if I hold that where that retainer was and move this up, can you see what's happening? Although that's the extreme, it's fine. I don't like the way that that is brushing against here and here and tugging on the on the uh, the actual connection point there. Um, so what I decided to do that particular cable, I've decided to um, actually keep outside the retainer and just tuck it under here. And now you can see this can easily move uh, both ways just fine, and that won't be a problem uh, inside of there. So I think that's a nicer idea. If you're at all a little bit paranoid, you could just put a rip tie, a zip tie rather, around here. Um, just very loosely just to make sure that this section doesn't flap too much and just holds it uh, kind of just to the south of where this retainer is um, and then you've kind of got a much uh, a much better situation. Let me just flip this over as well and show you how these two look next to each other. So here's the older gimbal on the left and we've got the new M M7 gimbal on the right. Um, and yeah, immediately, I mean, this, this still feels nice. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the stock gimbals, uh, but the difference in feel um, is just uh, night and day for me, certainly. And certainly in terms of that, um, what I was talking about with the way it bottoms out, as you go to the extreme of the stick, you can hear that, that you can kind of get a sense for it from listening to the noise. The way it's just got a dampening to it that feels really, really nice as opposed to this, which is a bit more, a little bit more clunky and uh, yeah, it just doesn't feel as nice. This has like a dampness to it. it. Actually feels like it's got some, some you know, that's part of the design. So I'm going to lift that up, put the screw in from the other side uh, and then adjust the tension and we should be good to go. Okay, so you can see I've put that screw in there all the way through this arm. This now holds this arm up and of course that now means that this is nice and loose. So the throttle is now um, completely loose. And it's as simple as that. If you were mode two, uh, mode one, you would do the same on the other side to make that your throttle stick, but I'm mode two. And you can see that is now nice and loose. Um, so the last thing to do is just this uh, tensioning. So I'm, I don't actually like any notchiness uh, in mine, if I do just the faintest amount, my, my, the main thing I want is to get the resistance right. Um, at the minute you can see it's completely loose. So the one that I'm going to be tightening down is this one. So we're going to start off by uh, just getting some contact there, um, which I can feel I've got. And then I'm going to have a feel. Uh, that still feels a bit loose to me. So I'm going to go down a little bit further and let's see how that feels. Oh, that feels much nicer and I think that's probably spot on because obviously you want to get this feel right before you, um, yeah that feels pretty good to me. I, I like it to be fairly loose but not uh, with absolutely zero resistance. Um, so maybe just a tiny bit more uh, and then we're good. So let's just uh, crank that down just a tiny, maybe like half a turn and I think we're probably about there and yeah that feels that feels pretty good to me and the last thing to do is the stick tension now it's easier to actually do it from this side and i can feel that that feels a little bit stiff for me um, and from here i can see quite clearly this is the spring that's recentering uh, when you go to the edge of the stick so what i'll need to do is loosen the tension on that spring uh, if i want this resistance to be less uh, for the stick to feel a little bit looser or increase the tension on that spring to make uh, to make it stiffer still uh, now where you'll need to adjust this is actually a hex tool adjustment um, they don't actually include a hex tool in the kit which they should really um, but it's a standard size so we'd actually get in there and you can see 
don't know if I can actually get this at an angle where you might be able to see it there just about. Um, but basically as I tighten that we should see the uh, as I'm, I'm turning clockwise and tightening the spring is getting shorter and that is going to make the stick feel a little bit looser because the spring is under less tension. Uh, if I go the other way and I lengthen it um, it will start to add more tension to the spring and feel much stiffer. Um, so for this axis, for the x-axis, it will be this adjustment here and then the same on the other side if I do the pitch axis which will be this guy. You can see where the spring is moving there and literally right opposite in this hole is exactly the same. You get the hex driver in, you adjust it clockwise or counterclockwise uh, to get the tension exactly where you want it. The other thing you can do here if you want to is to adjust the height of the stick and because these feel a little more recessed than the standard gimbals I'm going to want to extend these out. Um, now you can just simply unscrew these but first you need to uh, get in there with a hex uh, tool and actually loosen the grub screw on the top so we're going to back that guy right out um, and then what we're going to do, the easiest way I find to do this is to actually move the stick around whether you're doing this with your thumbs or you're a pincher like me um, and just screw this out a little bit um, and then try again, screw out a little bit, try again so that's starting to feel a little bit too long so I'm going to go back a bit until that feels like I can complete a good circle and that all sort of feels nice and comfortable so I know I'm roughly in the right spot there. Um, once that's done don't forget to put your hex tool back on and to tighten down that grub screw and then with that done that stick is not going anywhere um, and that's pretty much perfect and then if I put that to the side you can see uh, this one needs to come up to the same so I tend to eyeball getting this one up to roughly the same height as this one. Okay so everything done as I said when we line this back up we just want to make sure let me tilt it this way just so you can see you can very very careful lining those pins up and I think I've got them there we go you can see them just poking through there so pins above all else get those through and make sure they're nice and straight and then we can press down and we should good you can see that's all gone back in and lined up um, I'm just going to flip that over and make one final check for the feel of all of this and this feels pretty damn good to me and nice and close to what I'm used to with the um, X9D, my other Tyrannus. Now having the premium feel of the gimbals that my X9D has, there is absolutely no doubt this will get a hell of a lot more use. Um, so is it worth the upgrade? In my opinion, absolutely. But it really is down to how you feel about the gimbals you use. If you're happy with them, stick with them. But for me personally, these are the ones to go for. They really have a lot of advantages. As I said, generally far better centering that won't go, uh, you know, it could be as little as a year before you start to notice that uh, the centering is drifting quite dramatically. Um, the resolution's great. The actual feel and the endpoints feel really nice. It just mechanically, they feel so much nicer to use. Um, so yeah, it's all pluses for me. I really like them. Um, there are going to be links in the description as always. And if the M9s are anything to go by, if you're even half thinking about getting a set of these uh, you want to think about it fast because these no doubt will sell out fast and be just as hard to get hold of as the M9s were so best of luck I uh, hope you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one